All my favorite video games use music and sound design to tell their stories just as much as the plot and the characters. It doesn't matter what kind of story it is, if it's a whole super long narrative with a bunch of characters and through lines to follow, or an epic space opera where you shoot aliens in the future as a super soldier, or something as simple as a platformer game, music tells the story. In the platformer, the story is that the game is a fun platformer in a whimsical fun world. Music should tell you that. Maybe it's more of a somber platformer, music should tell you that too. Just the sheer power that music has in games to convey tone and tell you everything you need to know about a situation is crazy. It's so good, I love it, man. More examples. The final champion theme of Pokemon Black and White 2 tells you that it's a friendly but heartfelt and earnest battle, celebrating the joy of fighting alongside your Pokemon, while the theme of the true leader of the evil team Plasma tells you he wants to kill you. Persona 4 is all about searching for the truth by exploring a world of mental landscapes inside TVs that takes the shape of people's suppressed thoughts and feelings. The theme of the backstage area where you prep for dungeons feels super oppressive and in your face. It feels like it's mocking you for being there, for trying to find the truth at all. The music in the Zero Escape series mystery games is able to make escape rooms where you solve puzzles feel like a final boss in an RPG. And then there's Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, which are games that I went into expecting to not enjoy, but then I did, like a sucker, because of the characters of the music. So you've got this character, Professor Clavel, the headmaster of the academy who's been helping you confront a group of rogue students who were victims of bullying. How do you do, fellow kids? Because he wants to truly help them. Right before you confront your anonymous contact behind the whole operation, the original head of the team, Clavel stops you and tells you that he's actually been the secret boss this whole time. He challenges you to a battle. He's the real mastermind. And the music tells you, wait, no he isn't. His theme feels dignified and comforting, not menacing. Like you're walking through the halls of academia, like someone's excited to see you grow and flourish. He's a good teacher and a responsible adult, trying to make sure you have enough strength to go through with this. All the most memorable moments in games like this have music that works side by side with the story, not fighting with it or feeling like an afterthought. Visual novels in particular need their music to be working just as hard as the writing. They're all heavy text and narration, but you're not reading a book here, it's still an interactive game with visual and audio elements. The main action in the Danganronpa series is technically just a bunch of people standing in a circle talking to each other, but the stakes are high. The premise. 16 students trapped and forced to live together. To escape to the outside world, you have to kill someone here and get away with it. At the class trial after a murder, one of the people here is a killer. They are unexposed. Everyone besides the killer gets executed by the evil Monokuma. It's exciting and tense and dramatic and emotional and kind of hilariously stupid sometimes. Sure. That's a really exciting premise already. So how do you make the class trials feel tense and exciting too? With killer voice acting, a very dynamic camera, and music. Masafumi Takata has such a distinctive sound with Danganronpa that fits it perfectly. Everyone's taking turns arguing and throwing accusations and defending themselves. You use your evidence to shoot through contradictions while banging music plays. You're not reading a book, you're playing a game here. Uh oh, now everyone's panicking and talking over each other. Get a new track to fit that vibe. In between trials, when the murders happen, let's get some funky investigation music to set the mood of looking for clues to expose the killer. Then there's the Zero Escape series, also with a bunch of people trapped together and forced to play a different type of death game called the Nonary Game. In the first game, the cast has to escape a sinking ship in 9 hours, and the main action and meat of the gameplay here is escape rooms. The music by Shinji Hosoe fits that mood with lots of synth sounds and music that's easy to brainstorm along to, to facilitate you looking around and solving puzzles. Except for in the very beginning, where you have to escape from the room you wake up in before it floods, the music is frenetic and stress-inducing. The second entry in the series has the Ambidex game. The premise here is that three groups of nine characters have to take a gamble. After each round of escape rooms, you go into separate rooms and vote to either ally or betray the person you were partnered with that round. If both sides pick ally, they both get points. If they both choose to betray, no change. If one person chooses to ally and the other chooses to betray, the one who chooses to ally loses points. Lose enough points to get to zero, you die. Do you trust the other person to vote ally? Do you try to betray them first, either to gain the upper hand or because they can't be trusted? The music eggs you on, keeping you tense. The results of each round determine everyone's fate. What will you choose? Again, it's technically just people standing around talking, but the writing is amazing and the music nails it too. And it's a remix of the very first escape room theme from the first game.
still stress inducing, but in a different way for a different type of danger. Having different versions of the same melody like that can be really effective. In old Fire Emblem games, there were separate tracks for the player phase, attacking you in the player phase, the enemy phase, and being attacked during the enemy phase. Which isn't bad, it works. But that's four different pieces of music for a single map, not including the boss theme. Player phase, attack, 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 enemy phase, defend, defend, defend. It's a lot of jarring musical back and forth. But starting with Awakening on the 3DS, whenever a battle starts, the map theme transitions to a more exciting version of itself. then it calms down again when the action's over. It's a different approach that keeps the same energy of the battle throughout. You flow in and out of the battles. Even changes that are subtler than that can be really effective too. In Scarlet and Violet, the regular battle theme for Pokemon in the mysterious Area Zero is like this. Then you fight one of the mysterious Paradox Pokémon, dangerous Pokémon pulled from the past and future, and now it sounds like this. It's more menacing now. Subverting the expectations of music is already set up is also a really effective way to really drive home a sudden change in tone. You're walking through town at Persona 1 to visit your friend at the hospital. Everything's chill. Then, your classmate goes missing, the layout of the hospital becomes warped, demons appear everywhere in the streets, the whole town gets closed off from the outside, you step back outside, and now the music is like... The map looks the same, but with the context and the new music, your imagination does the rest. You can practically see demons running all over the streets. Fate Grand Order gives you adventurous map theme after adventurous map theme for all its singularities, where you travel to the past of fixed history. It's a pretty straightforward story at first, Rome and America and then, in the sixth chapter where the story really hits its stride, something's different. Persona 5 has high energy Palestine and for high energy Palestine, they're all bangers. Then, the moment you finally step inside the bowels of the place you've been spelunking all game and see the bizarre scenery, it's even better because instead of a high energy Palestine, we get this. All the other palaces have been showing how distorted and evil their rulers are. This one's saying, no, 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 look how sad and distorted you are. The music is a slow, repetitive march. It doesn't make you feel a sense of dread. It's more like something bad has already happened. The only thing to do is accept it. Then in the other direction, you're making your way through the game, having a good time, everything's cool. And suddenly... Instead of the unexpectedly sinister, we have the hauntingly beautiful. Those first few piano notes grab your attention. The chanting voices make the clinically white and sterile interior feel like somewhere holy. The whole melody feels so full of sorrow. It's so... Good. Again, the best moments are when the music is working with both the writing and the gameplay in perfect harmony. The worst moments are when the music and the gameplay seem to be fighting each other, or one of them struggling to do all the heavy lifting of making the game actually fun. Persona 3 was the first Persona to have a main battle theme with that now distinctive Persona style that I'd die for. But the game itself is insanely long with less than half the substance of 4 and 5, its single dungeon with no variety gets stale by the end, and your motive for exploring it so much is barely even elaborated on. So by the 800th time you've heard, the energy might be starting to wear off. But what's even worse is the bonus scenario called The Answer, which is a long 30-hour grind with no daily life segments to break things up, with tiny, insubstantial sprinkles of story every now and then, and an undercooked, bizarrely written attempt at examining the theme of grief. It's a pain, and the remix of Mass Destruction is doing all the work here. And it's so good! 
but it can only do so much when the gameplay and story feel like they're just wasting your time. But that's nothing compared to Persona 2, which came out in 1999, where it was still okay to have obscenely frequent random encounters and so many tediously long dungeons filled with traps and dead ends and general old school bullshit. The characters are good, but the plot itself has such insanely bizarre pacing that it just derails the whole thing. So it has a good battle theme and good music, but it can't do the heavy lifting on its own. It's like putting a band-aid on a bullet wound. When it comes to music, taking your foot off the pedal sometimes is important too. In both Persona and Shin Megami Tensei, negotiating with demons in the middle of battle is a core part of the gameplay loop. But, for example, in Persona 1, the main battle theme is amazing, but it becomes distracting when it continues to play at full volume when you're supposed to be talking instead of currently battling. Just talking could be less actively exciting, and the music can sometimes make it difficult to focus on the dialogue instead of... Persona 2 remedied that somewhat by lowering the volume a bit when you start to negotiate, but it's still a bit of a problem. So what do the modern entries do? Both Persona 5 and Shin Megami Tensei 5 have their own unique negotiation tracks that better fit the vibe. In Persona 5, it's a hold up at gunpoint by a group of rebellious phantom thieves fighting for justice. The music sounds pretty fun. In SMT5, it's a tense standoff against an unpredictable demon with the tables could turn at any moment. It's less confident sounding. In particular, SMT5 does a really cool thing where when you first enter combat, the music doesn't play immediately like most games. Instead, it's a standoff. Maybe you'll look at their stats first, try to negotiate with them, maybe you'll decide to run and not fight at all. But then, the moment someone throws the first punch, It's also really great to listen to a game's OST online after you finish it. It's such good fun to see people's comments on videos of a particular track, with moments or quotes or jokes that the track makes you think of. Plus, learning the names the composer decided to give each track gives you an even richer experience. In Persona 5, the track that plays in the depths of mementos is called Freedom and Security. The names of the escape room cracked in the first Zero Escape game start with Unary Game, then Binary Game, and go all the way up to Nonary Game which is genius. And it's one thing to fight Ishtar in SMT5 and hear that theme, but then you see the name of the track is Dancing Crazy Murder. Ooh. What a perfect name. Then there's the track called Humans, Demons, and... with the final term probably being Gods, because it normally plays when you throw hands at a powerful god trying to murder you. The guitar feels like it's screaming, your life is on the line. Then there's Clash of the Mighty, which plays for demons and enemies that just challenging you to like a test of strength. This track is for a test of honor, telling you to prove yourself against a worthy foe, and it's so good. To finish this video, there are tracks that tell a story all by themselves. Near the very end of SMT5, you can encounter Shiva, the Hindu god of destruction, a side boss who's stronger than the final boss, Vazuki, one of the main bosses you fought earlier, answers to this guy. All the characters in this game have been making their decision on how to claim the now empty throne of God to reshape the world in the way they think is best. Shiva's been gathering energy to destroy and recreate the universe, part of the endless cycle of destruction and creation in Hindu myth. That's the setup, and his theme is called Destruction. It starts slow and muted, like the calm before a storm. The battle seems manageable. A horn goes the melody. It's growing in intensity like Shiva's powers. And here comes the bass. Then it crescendos. He's somewhat subdued. You're on the ropes. There's so much going on. He's going to wipe out the universe clean if you don't do something. This is the manifestation of Samsara, the core belief in Hinduism that Lord Shiva destroys and creates the universe to destroy the imperfections of the world. 
Shiva's power comes to a head. Music's getting more chaotic. This is the cycle of creation and destruction repeating over and over. Oh my god, what is he doing? 